70-year-old retired civil servant Elizabeth Akiola spends most of her time at home looking after her grandchildren. There's no power line to her home in this village in the outskirts of Abuja, but thanks to Lumos of the Grid Power Solution, she's able to keep her grandchildren entertained with off-the-grid solar power, light up her house, run a fan and charge many gadgets. She's able to afford all that with money enough to run a small generator for only one hour. The noise from generator is reduced. It's no more in my house. Nobody, no, it's no time for me to get anybody to be looking for people to come and help me on the gen. I just switch this on and the lights come out. So the cost is not much on me. Buying fuel, looking for willing to to buy fuel, is out of my life now. The unit comes with a solar panel and a power storage unit. Altogether, a set costs just over fifty dollars. Thereafter, users can pay weekly or monthly to maintain steady electricity supply. Lumos launched operations here at the beginning of the year and has already connected 50,000 homes and small businesses to solar power. The current solar panel is just 80 watts and the power storage unit is 360 watts, just enough to power a small business or a home. The company says it's upgrading that capacity to meet higher energy demands. In total, the company is targeting 7 million homes and small businesses across Nigeria. Our focus is really is the mass market and those individuals that live in areas which are not well served by the grid. Uh, those that would typically spend hundreds of naira daily on alternate energy sources to the grid like generators. Low electricity supply is often cited as the main obstacle to development in Nigeria. President Buhari's government had made it priority. It has now raised the generation capacity from over 3,000 megawatts two years ago to 7,000 megawatts. But that's still outstripped by demand. By some estimates, this West African giant would need as much as 160,000 megawatts to meet current demands. 60% of Nigeria's 180 million people do not have access to electricity. Even in urban areas where power from the grid is supposed to be available, it's erratic. So businesses and homes rely on costly generators as alternative source of electricity. Kilechi Mekalam, CGT in Abuja, Nigeria. Let's discuss more on rural development in Africa with Dr. Robert Kagiri, who now joins us live here in the Nairobi studios. Dr. Kagiri is the director in charge of strategy and policy management at the African Policy Institute. Thank you for joining us. Um, uh, much of Africa is rural, and in line with the sustainable development goals, communities need clean water, they need education, and a list of other things. Where does Africa currently stand in terms of rural development? Thank you for having me. and. Um uh, Africa right now have got um, a number of things that they still need to do to um, deal with the issue of meeting the SDG goals which must be met within 17 years or so. Um, so what one thing that they need to focus on is obviously infrastructure uh, to because one of the problems that farmers have is uh, access to markets and one and the key thing to accessing those markets is through having the right infrastructure in terms of, of roads and in terms of um, uh, being provided, like now the, the current um, railway system that is coming to for cargo uh, in, in many African countries, that will help to uh, mitigate against some of the problems they face, which includes um, spoilage of perishable goods and um, not reaching the target markets fast enough. So the rural community uh, needs to be move away from the former agrarian uh, way of doing uh, farming to a more mechanized, like we see in China. Mm -hmm. Mechanization is what has, uh, and value addition of products, is what has lifted the rural community out of poverty. Uh, in China, 600 million people over the last two decades. So if the population that lives in rural areas, which is slow, quickly diminishing because we are becoming a very urbanized continent, but the ones who remain are very important for the food security of Africa. So they need to be given the right incentives. Uh, mitigates against climate change, provide the right infrastructure, access to markets, value addition of their product, products. And uh, when you talk about value addition, you may recall that our colonial history meant that we used to produce raw materials 
to be processed abroad and brought back to be sold by us. So we never got the full value. So we want to move the money from getting farm gate prices to getting value add added products. We need to provide them with facilities to store in terms of uh, refrigeration, cold storage facilities, because um, we are getting a lot of wastage. A lot of wastage also from poor roads when we are moving products to market. So those are the challenges that, that we face and that we need to address um, and the various inequities that exist in terms of uh, uh, money being given to incentivize these people. So there's a lot to be done. A lot is being done so far, uh, but there's still a lot to be done if we're going to use uh, our rural farmers to provide food security for Africa. And you mentioned China. Uh, yeah. it, has, it can be considered as a benchmark, really, when you talk about alleviating poverty, yes. uh, having lifted so many people out of poverty in such a short span of time. Right. So what lessons can we learn from that model of China? Uh, there are quite a number of lessons. The first one, and very key, is to understand that um, in the new globalized community, you must look outside your internal markets. So that's what Africa needs to do. Find out what the needs, they do a needs assessment or, or market analysis of the kind of products that are needed in, in, in not only in China, but in Central Asia and other countries, and in the Middle East as well, as we are opening up the Eastern Seaboard for trade. So we need to understand what they need and produce what they want. I'll give you an example. There's a Kenyan businessman who has been doing value addition on macadamia nuts, and he's doing containers of uh, value-added uh, macadamia nuts and being distributed um, in airlines throughout China. So that we need to come up with the kind of products that they want and process them for them. Uh, through the Belt and Road Initiative, the, the former Maritime Silk Road and, um, is being expanded, especially for uh, the, the Eastern African countries, but it's also expanding deeper through the internal rail network connectivity to even as far as uh, countries like Guinea and Senegal. So um, we need to really focus on uh, getting produce to them and uh, ensuring that we learn from the mechanization program which has lift, helped to lift these people out of poverty mm. and has brought about in efficiency, e efficiencies. I visited earlier this year a demonstration farm in Malawi uh, agricultural demonstration farm and what the Chinese are trying to do is uh, help us go through a shorter learning curve by just basically taking what they have been doing and transform, transforming agriculture. This was in Lilongwe, Malawi and they are doing it in many, very many southern African states. Right. Yes. All right. Very interesting. This conversation could really continue for quite a while. You're welcome. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much Dr. Robert Kagiri in studio with us. Jeff, back to you.